part 27 of Folk Truth Could Talk. Hello everybody, welcome back to my video blogs of If Oak Trees Could Talk. I hope that you've had a great holiday season, that your new year is off to a great start. If you've been following along, I appreciate your patience as I've taken a few weeks off. But as we jump right back into my video blogs, we will pick back up in Chapter 14, The Gathering. Chapter 14, The Gathering. She asked Sheriff Eugene, So what are you going to do, Eugene? I would do what I'd done last night again and again. I would go with my mother from Glenview to search for my father a million times if I had to. I am not apologizing for my behavior to Mr. Hodges or to anyone else. He can kiss my... Well, never mind. My parents are my main concern and their well-being. My mother was going to leave Glenview with or without me, so I went with her. What do you mean, Miss Amelia? Was Mrs. Tyler driving and you rode along as a passenger in her car? Eugene questioned. It was my understanding that you were driving and carried your mama away from Glenview, he continued to interrogate. Amelia thought about the question immediately without pondering and answered, No, I did not drive. So what you're telling me is that Mr. Hodges had no clue how my parents left Glenview. I think it would be very interesting to see what Mr. Henderson down at Mason Creek Times Newspaper would do with a story like this one, wouldn't you? Amelia asked as the idea just came to her that Mr. Hodges would not want the reputation of Glenview's residential home for the elderly to be tarnished. She also was telling the truth. She wasn't the one who drove the getaway car. Her husband, Robert, drove. As a matter of fact, Eugene, if you would let Mr. Hodges know... No, that's okay. I will tell him myself that I intend on reporting to Mr. Henderson that my parents simply walked out of his precious Glenview without the slightest resistance from Glenview's staff. I think he would be more than glad to drop all of the charges. Wouldn't you agree with me, Eugene? Amelia said slyly as she knew that Eugene would drive like a maniac to Glenview's residential home for the elderly to tell Mr. Hodges what she was threatening. Now, Miss Amelia, think about what you're saying. You don't really want to hurt anyone, now do you? Eugene stated rather pathetically, for it had been rumored that he had been used to do Mr. Hodges' dirty work for several years. Well, I will have to think about it long and hard before I contact Mr. Henderson, but I am considering paying him a little visit, Amelia continued to threaten as if she'd pretended not to know that the sheriff was somehow in cahoots with Mr. Hodges and every other type of dirty dealings that went down in Mason Creek. She knew that the only reason that he was being nice to her was that his parents had been friends with Amelia's parents for years. Also, he always had a flame burning for Amelia when they were growing up, but never asked her out. Eugene's mother would not stand for him being anything but nice to the Tyler family. Okay then, Miss Amelia, we will expect you to carry your parents back to Glenview in a little while, Eugene stated. I will assure Mr. Hodges that your parents will be back as soon as they eat a decent breakfast. When Amelia had gotten off the telephone with Eugene, she immediately called Robert. She told Robert about speaking to Eugene and about threatening to go to Mr. Henderson with the story if Mr. Hodges insisted on pressing charges against her. I just feel like there's something that is very wrong going on at Glenview. Mr. Hodges is so worried about his reputation. Oh well, forget about all that stuff. Now on to the more important things. Will you please bring my parents a good breakfast from Elma's Biscuit Barn? Amelia asked with a chuckle. Elma's Biscuit Barn was just a little country restaurant, but Elma Simpson was a third generation owner and one of the best southern cooks in Mason Creek. No one made homemade biscuits and sausage gravy like Elma or real southern grits oozing with butter and bacon. Going to Elma's Biscuit Barn was Henry's thing to do when he was well. He would go and buy breakfast almost every Saturday morning for the whole family. It was a normal Saturday routine, so Robert knew exactly what to order and pick up for each of them. Crazy question, but do you want the usual? Robert asked also with a little chuckle. Yes, sir. I can't wait until Daddy and Mama gets a good whiff of what you've brought them this time to eat. I'm sure that the smile on Daddy's face will be even bigger than it was last night when he was eating his favorite hamburger and onion rings. Amelia whispered with a chuckle so as not to spoil the surprise for her parents. Also, we can all gather around the dining room table and eat the way that we used to. 
It will be wonderful. Thank you, babe, she continued. Good morning, my sweet daughter, Helen said as she was practically beaming. She walked from the garden straight through the house to the kitchen was barely using her walker at all. Dear, I believe we have some ground coffee in the big freezer if you would like to go get it. I will get the coffee pot ready for us. Good morning, Mama. How did you and Daddy sleep? Amelia asked as she noticed again that her mother was so chipper. Oh, like little babies. It was simply heaven on earth. I am sorry to be so joyous when obviously you haven't had too much sleep. Stop worrying, Amelia. Everything is going to be all right, Helen ordered. Will it be all right, Mama? Amelia asked to be reassured. Things are good, Amelia. Your sweet daddy and I will return home in a few weeks. We will have our lives back and our family will be complete again. What is there to worry about? Helen explained just as Henry came walking through the kitchen. Well, look at these beautiful girls in the lunchroom. Boy, I am sure glad that I came today, Henry said with an ornery little grin. Stop it, Henry. Amelia is really worried about us, Helen ordered. Yes, dear. I was just teasing, sweet Amelia, Henry said with a wink. Daddy, so you meant to call us girls? Did you mean to call the kitchen, the lunchroom too? Amelia asked and told the surprise that he was sound enough in his mind to tease her like this. For this is the way he had talked for months now. Yes, my sweet daughter. It's the Tyler sense of humor. I'm sorry. I will be more serious, Henry said apologetically. Henry reached out to Amelia with open arms as she ran to get into them. She loved the comfort of her daddy's arms. They always made her feel loved and safe. As she embraced him tightly, she finally believed that he was indeed almost back to his old normal self. Thank you once again for tuning in or reading along with me. It is my hope that you have been enjoying my romance suspense novel, If Oak Trees Could Talk, for it has been my pleasure to share it with you. As always, I would love to hear from you. I want to thank all of you that have begun following my WordPress blogs. Please continue to tune in as we are about halfway through the book. If you are interested in obtaining your own copy of If Oak Trees Could Talk or any of my other books, please visit my Amazon author page here. Also, if you are new to my video blogs and would like to catch up on the story from the beginning, please check out the archives in this blog or simply subscribe to my YouTube videos as they are numbered and in order. I also am a weekly contributor to the Lakeview Times. All of my videos are published each week at www.lakeviewtimes.com.